Hello, so today we start the last of our installments on basic statistics in Excel. Today we're going to be covering exponential and power law regressions on data. So here on my Excel spreadsheet, I have two data sets, one on drug absorption data within a human body um, over time, and the other is the rate of disappearance of a reactant during chemical reaction. And so on the surface, these might look a little bit similar, uh, except one is obviously decreasing with time, whereas our rate is dependent on our concentration of our reactant, and so the rate increases as the concentration of our, rea our reactant increases. So the drug absorption data is a classic um, mass transfer problem, and the disappearance of a reactant is a classic kinetics problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plot this, these data on a scatter plot, just like we did for the linear regression, and we're going to take a look at what it looks like. So for the drug absorption data, we've highlighted that already. We're going to insert a scatter plot, just like we did last time. And what we can see is the drop in our uh, the amount in our in the human body over time. And so what we're going to do is just like we did before, we're going to add a trend line. And we're going to take a look at what seems to fit. So the linear regression obviously does not fit this data set very well. Um, but we have some other choices. So we could try polynomial. That's not really great either. Uh, we could do a logarithmic. Nope, it won't let us do that. We could, whoops, let's go back. It broke. Oh, we could do the exponential. We could do a power law. Nope, power law broke as well. So looks like exponential for the win. So we're going to go back in there, click exponential, and now we can do the same thing that we did for the linear regression, where we can display our equation on this chart, and we can display the r-squared value on the chart. Okay, great. So what we have here is our, we can do the same thing where we can add our title if we want a title, drug absorption data. Um, we can add our axis titles, horizontal and vertical. This time I set it up properly so that our x-axis is in the first column and our y-axis is in the second column, so it makes it so that we don't have to flip stuff around in our axis there in the proper locations. And so on our bottom axis, we have time in minutes. And on our vertical axis, our y-axis, we have the drug in the body in micrograms. And I'm just gonna use uh, micro as you here. All right, so perfect. So we have a great regression on here, but last time I showed you how to get the slope and the intercept. Well, you can't really do that for an exponential function, but what we can do is actually linearize this equation. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. First way is we can actually take that, um, if you were to linearize this equation, all you do is take, you take the natural log of both sides, and what's gonna happen is just the y value is going to be log transformed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform that axis and so if we click on the axis, um, we can right click on it and we can format the axis here or um, we already had the bar open and so when we clicked on the axis, it brought up our, our toolbar and we just clicked on the one that has these uh, bars for the graph. We can adjust the scale of our axis if we want to, but really what we wanna do first is we're gonna do a logarithmic scale. And we're just gonna do base 10. So you can see that, wow, that's a really great fit. We actually look pretty linear once we actually um, apply the logarithmic axis to our y-axis. What happens if we do the same thing with our x-axis? Nope, not happy, doesn't wanna do that. So, oh, and it's not linear anymore. So obviously log transforming that x-axis doesn't work. And if you look at what the equation looks like when it's linear, the x um, variable is not, doesn't end up log transformed because it's in the exponent. All right, so that's one way that we can do this. The other way, <clears throat> let's make a second copy of that, is let's take off the logarithmic scale. What we can do is we can actually log transform our y variable. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the log of our y and we're gonna say equals natural log of our y value. And then we're gonna just fill that down. 
All right, so now instead of transforming the axis, we can just transform that data and we can pull that over. Whoops, that didn't work because I dropped it. Try again. There we go. All right, so we still have, the problem is we still have that exponential trend line, but no longer is it exponential trend line, it's now linear. And so this is great. Now we can actually see the linear trend in our data. Um, if you want, um, I'm not going to talk about what those values mean. Um, you can look up more information on, on log transformation of linearization of uh, exponential functions. But um, once it's linearized, now we can use the slope and the intercept function like we did before. So let's do that. You cannot do this on the original data. It will not work. It'll, this is specific for a linear regression. So we can do our y's. In this case, this is our log transformed y. And it's our x's. And so now we can actually get those data points. We'll do that for both the slope and the intercept. There you go. And so now we can actually pull those. And um, if for some reason we want to do a prediction, we could do so with that slope and intercept to get a, a, a curve for our data. All right, so let's do the same thing. Um, we're going to do this again, but this time we're going to look at the, this other set of data, which is the rate of disappearance of a reactant during a chemical reaction. So we're going to plot that also on a scatter plot, just like we've been doing. Insert scatter no lines all right so this is a little bit different the rate as i said was increasing with time um, that also does not look linear and we're going to add a trend line by right clicking all right again not linear it's not exponential you might think it's logarithmic that doesn't look very good to me so you could do tri polynomial also not very good Ah, power law function, that looks great. So maybe we're unsure and maybe we think maybe it's a logarithmic function or a power law function. One way you can tell is by doing that log transformation of the data. So looks like it's a power law function. I'm just gonna delete the chart title on this guy and we can add in our, um, our axis titles, I'm not gonna do that right now, but on the bottom we've got our concentration and on the y-axis, we have our rate of loss of reactant A. All right, so power law is a little different. Um, based on, we can actually plot that regression line the same way, displaying our equation on the chart and the r-squared value. Again, it's a pretty good fit. But in this case, our x value is um, not in the exponent. And so what that means is when we log, if we were to log transform this equation to linearize it, both the y value and the x value are going to be log transformed. And so that means if we want to linearize this equation, we have to log transform the y and the x, or we can log transform our axes. So if we go back in, again, we can right click on the axis, form an axis, or because we already had the toolbar open, we can. it'll bring us to the axis. We again click on those bar graph options, click axis options, and we can scroll down. And again, we're gonna log transform that value. All right, so that's not enough to just do the Y, we also have to do the X for a power law function. And so we'll also make that logarithmic. And so now, voila, it's linear. Um, but again, uh, this still gives us the equation for the power law because we only transform the axes. We could also do the same thing we did before, but in this case, we're going to take the natural log of our x and y. And you can give these better names, but essentially you're just going to take the natural log of all of our x values. We're going to write that and then fill down. And because it's the same function, we're going to fill that across. Now this might be a little bit unhappy because we go through the zero. Let's try it and see what happens. So we're gonna change our data sets over and just click and drag. Yeah, it's not very happy. It doesn't like that it's negative. All right, so there we go. And the problem was with the trend line. So we're gonna make a linear trend line now because it's been linearized and we can display the equation 
and the R squared value. And you'll notice that the R squared is the same because essentially it's the same trend line. It's just plotted in a different way. And so we can do the same thing. We can then take the slope and the intercept. So let's just pull that over. And it's not the whole data set, so it's y versus x. I'll just hit enter. And we can do the same thing for the intercept. Oops. And pull that down. And so you can see that it matches what we have in the chart. And so this is a great way if you need those values. Um, the only way to get them in Excel is to actually linearize the chart, get the slope and the intercept, and then transform it back to what those values would be in the power law function. Okay, and so that's pretty much it. That's how you deal with power law functions and exponential functions in Excel. Um, that is it for our basic stats. Maybe at some point I'll add some more if people have questions, but for now, this is all I have planned. So I hope you've, I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, and feel free to check out some of the other videos that I've been generating on other software packages.